Now, hey developers, today we are looking at the three behemoths in the Vue.js ecosystem. We're gonna look at Gridsum, we're gonna look at Nuxt content, and we're gonna look at Vuepress. I'm gonna tell you which one you should pick for that new blog or technical documentation site or headless CMS. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Quickly, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I just wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor, .tech Domains. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably love domain names and you love to buy ones that are short and relevant, but also most importantly, available. And that's what's really cool about .tech Domains. There's a ton of really cool domains available and the .tech domain is broad enough that you can kind of understand that this is technology related as well. A lot of really cool sites are using .tech domains like Hollywood.tech, Viacom.tech, even personal sites like AustinEvans.tech. So if you guys are interested and you wanna search for a really cool domain name, go to go.tech slash Eric and then search for your domain name. If you end up buying it, you actually get up to 80% off and one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric and go ahead and pick up that domain name. Thanks. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here. I have made a PowerPoint presentation for you guys and we're gonna talk about these three awesome choices. And that's what's really cool about the Vue ecosystem right now is that there is definitely more than one way to do it. So if you are looking to create a technical, technical documentation site, you have a lot of choices, but I think for a lot of people, they just don't know like why you would choose one versus the other and what all three of these do. So let's just jump into it. Oh yeah, and throughout this presentation, if you disagree with anything I say, leave a comment below. I love to hear what you guys think because uh, you know this is my personal opinion and feel free to tell me I'm wrong. So let's take a look at what these three options are, what they offer us, and a little history behind them. By the way, we're not gonna look at code inside this in this video. We're not gonna actually bring all three up. I've done exhaustive amount of videos on all three of these. I'll include some in the description below. So if you wanna learn how to use Nux content or Gridsum or Vuepress, take a look in the description below. I have videos and tutorials on how to use all three of them. But since I have used all three of them, I can give you a little bit of an idea of, of some things I liked and some things I didn't like about them. First, the brand new one out of the block is called Nux Content. Nux itself just came, came out in October 26, 2016. So it's been around for quite a while. It was pretty much the biggest alternative to Vue and Vue CLI to create Vue applications out there. It started off more of a, a universal server side rendered application builder, but it's really become a lot more since then. Nuxt itself just came, came out in October 26, 2016. So it's been around for quite a while. It was pretty much the biggest alternative to Vue and Vue CLI to create Vue applications out there. It started off more of a, a universal server side rendered application builder, but it's really become a lot more since then. Recently, Nux content came out and Nux content is a way to create Nuxt apps, but use Markdown inside them. So we'll talk about that more. And that just recently came out in the last few weeks as of, the, as of this recording. Now, Gridsum is our next in line. It came out September 16th, 2018. And that was Gridsum slash CLI 0.0.3. So they've, it, they have definitely evolved a lot. And this is Gridsum we're gonna talk about is more of our Jamstack powered creator, um, uses uh, headless CMSs, bring your own data, so we're gonna talk more about that. And then of course there is Vuepress and that was released June 8, 2019. It's actually a part of the Vue.js official Vue.js apps. It's officially supported by them and it's a great way to create technical documentation sites. So let's take a look at the GitHub stars and NPM downloads. So this kind of really gives us an idea of how popular these three choices are. So let's take a look at the GitHub stars and NPM downloads. So this kind of really gives us an idea of how popular these three choices are, how many people are using them, which kind of gives us an idea how big the community is and what we're gonna run into if we have problems. Cause you're gonna find out with all three of these, when you start going past what they offer out of the box, you're gonna to have to be doing some Googling. You're gonna to have to look up some GitHub issues because you know it's not always straightforward. Now they all three have great documentation sites, but the community does matter. So for Gridsum, there's 6,300 GitHub stars. 
It has about 14,000 downloads a week as of today, as when I checked it on, on NPM. On ViewPress, it has 16,700 stars and 45,000 downloads a week. You can see the ViewPress community is much, much bigger than the GridSim community, and it gets much more and more downloads. And Next Content has 639 stars because it's pretty much brand new, and the weekly downloads is only about 1,500. However, Next itself, which is kind of like the big parent that does a whole bunch of things, that is at 27,800 stars and weekly downloads is over 200,000. You can see really the community is really gone for and really enjoyed Nux because it is a pretty powerful platform to create not just static sites or universal sites, but just a lot of different types of content in Nux. So let's dive, dive into what Gridsum is. So they call it a Jamstack framework for Vue.js. Jamstack framework for Vue.js, what does that mean? So it's easy to connect to different data sources. So inside, inside Gridsum, you have this really elaborate plugin system and they have plugins for everything, for like WordPress, Contentful, Sanity. I mean, there's a whole bunch of CMSs that it supports and you can just plug it in. It also supports markdown files as well. It's a plugin for it. So we can read files off inside your directory. And then it also has support for Markdown. It also has static site generation. All three of these do. So what it does is it uses like a GraphQL interface and you write these GraphQL queries inside your view components because these are all view based apps. And then the GraphQL then goes to this GraphQL database. It pulls in information from whatever data source it has. You query it and then it gets displayed in the components. And then when you run it, you can actually generate a whole static site and then push it up somewhere. And of course, if that data changes, then you have to rerun and regenerate the whole site again. So there's obviously some negatives. It's actually, as of this recording, it's at 0 0.7 version release. So they still haven't hit version one, which I'm not sure why, but maybe they think that there's in some core components that it wants. It's not a, on Vue.js, but it's not like an official Vue.js project. So it's not a part of the, the Vue.js official Vue.js system. And if you don't like GraphQL, then you're probably not gonna like this. So let's talk about the second contender and that is ViewPress. So ViewPress is a view power stack site generator. That P is supposed to be capitalized by the way. I've missed that. So the, some of the advantages of this, it's like a minimalist, they call it a minimalist static site generator. So it's literally, you download ViewPress and it just takes seconds to run. It's quickly run apps. You can quickly download it. It's very minimalistic. I think it's only like one file. You can literally take an index.md file in an empty folder and then run ViewPress and create a whole static site out of it. And that's how easy it is to start off with. It's an official Vue.js project. So you're gonna get the, the support from the Vue.js. Core team members are gonna be on it. They do a great job. It has really great documentation because it's in that whole ecosystem of Vue products. It has, they call it a powerful plugin system. It does have a really cool plugin system and it's really made for content centric static sites, not apps, which also is sort of a disadvantage. So if you look at the negatives, it's really, it's a limited scope in ViewPress. It's really for document sites, technical document sites, right? It's basically for when you're trying to show information on the page on, on the site. So it's really focused on that. So Nux content. So it's a Git based headless CMS. So they call this, they call it a Git based headless CMS. It's basically a, almost like just a plugin you install on top of Nux itself. So you can fetch Markdown, JSON, YAML, and CSV files through a MongoDB like API. I tried it out. You can kind of do kind of cool queries, like only have certain files show up. You have the full power of Nux too. Like you can add Vuex really easily. You can add Vuex and Gridsum and ViewPress. But I noticed it's a little more clunky. You have to kind of get into different files. It doesn't feel quite right. With Nux, it's like built in. And then you also have the cool things with Nux where you can run it as a static site or a universal application site as well. Now, some of the negatives of Nux is it's really new. Uh, Nux content, that is. Nux content is really new. It probably, probably has some bugs. There's probably some limitations. I looked at the GitHub issues before this video and I did see quite a few of them. I'm sure the Nux team is going through them. And also I think in Nux, you can do so many things with it. There's a little bit more configuration. It's a little bit more complexity. I felt like Gatsby and ViewPress in some instances, the plugin system was really easy. While in Nux, I have to use these modules and it felt like I couldn't always find what I needed. So let's talk about that plugin system I was just talking about before. So in Gridsum, there is 21 official plugins, which is like, you can think of like source 
Airtable, Contentful, WordPress. So really most of their plugins are based on trying to get data into the grid, some GraphQL system itself, but there's 163 total plugins. So pretty much anything, any CMS, headless CMS you have out there, WordPress, Contentful, whatever you have, uh, even markdown files, you're gonna be able to get into the GridSum ecosystem pretty easily. On the other hand, ViewPress has 11 official plugins, 16 ViewPress community plugins, and 50 community plugins. Not as many plugins, and I also didn't see the same sort of focus on the headless CMS stuff that GridSum has. So it definitely didn't feel like the, the same at all. Now, Nux content actually has no plugins, but you can use many, many plugins for Nux itself. They have uh, over hundreds of Nux modules that you can use to do it. But I felt like, like I was trying to find like a good Nux WordPress module and I found one and it felt like it was kind of hard to use. And then when I was using Gatsby, like their Nux module or their WordPress module was super easy to set up and use. So your mileage may vary between all these different modules and plugins. So 100% all of them support view components. If you're using view components, that's perfect. Of course, you would want to use view components because that's you're using view. And so you don't have to worry about that. They all work the same. Let's talk about conclusion. Like what do I think you should get? So I don't want to pick a clear winner and this is I'm kind of copying out here because it really depends on what you're looking for. So like, let's say you're looking to connect to headless CMS and you're looking at maybe going to WordPress first, but you may later change to something completely different and you want that flexibility, then a great thing to maybe look at is GridSum because you have that GraphQL endpoint. Maybe if you really like GraphQL, I mean, then, then you, I think probably their best bet is something like GridSum and you can get GraphQL and do the same thing in Nuxt, but you're gonna have to do a lot more configuration and getting it running. Now, there's also a disadvantage of using GridSum since it is a, it's a, it's a 0.7 release. It's not fully like at a 1.0 release. So you might have some issues there, especially when you start getting out of the box things you're doing, you know, things that the system wasn't meant for. So do you want a fully functional web app? Then then this would be Nux content. So Nux content would be a way you can do it because you literally have that power of the Nux system in there. You have all your view components, you can get view X, you can do all your modules, you can create a fully functional app. Plus Nux content, then you can use things like Markdown. Or if you're wanting to create a, a really cool technical documentation site with different themes, then ViewPress might be your choice there. Let me talk about what I need. So things I need from a blog is view components, I want markdown support. I want view ecosystem support. I want static site generation, of course, and flexibility. Now, many of these are actually offered by all three of these. So I kind of went back and said, okay, what is the most important? I think flexibility is kind of want to learn too. And maybe this takes more configuration, but I want some flexibility. And so the winner for me was pretty obvious. And that is Nux content because I don't want to use a headless CMS and I don't really care that much for GraphQL. So GridSum is out of the question. And I just want to have the flexibility configured however I want. So that is definitely Nux. It's going to probably be more configuration. And I like the power of it with the trade-off of, of just being more complicated. So thanks. Let me know what you guys think below. Did I make the right choice? This is for me basically creating a blog. This is what my ideas was and why I needed it. So leave a comment below. Let me know. Thanks. I appreciate it. And also you can click any of these videos that are coming up and check those out as well.